Welcome to Swim, reading a hero from our time. A hero of our time. That, I don't know, no, 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 I was, uh, I was, 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 today. She looked and cried, it's Kaspich. Ah, the rascal. Has he come to make fun of us? I look more closely. Yes. It was, it was Kazvich, with his swarthy face, his tatters, and dirty as usual. That is my father's horse, said Bella, grasping me by the arm. She shook like a leaf, and her eyes flashed. Oh, I thought to myself, in you too, my dear girl, the rock blood is not silent. Come over here, I said to the sentry. Check your rifle and knock that fellow out of his saddle for me. You'll get a silver ruble. Yes, sire, only he won't stay put. Order him to, I said laughing. Hey, chum, shouted the sentry waving to him. Wait a bit, why do you spin like a top? Hasbich actually did stop and listen. He thought, no doubt, that we were opening negotiations with him. Negotiations indeed. My grenadier took aim, fire and missed. The instant the powder flashed in the pan, Kasbich pushed his horse and it leaped to one side. He rose in the stirrups, cried something in his own tongue and made a threatening gesture with his riding whip and disappeared. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, I said to the sentry. He's gone off to die, sire, he answered. You can't kill those damn people all outright. A quarter of an hour later, Pecoring returned from the hunt. Bella threw herself on his neck, and there was not a word of complaint, nor was there a single reproach for his long absence. By now even I was cross with him. For goodness sake, I said, just a moment ago, Kasbish was right over there and the other side of the river, and we fire at him. Nothing easier for you than to run into him. Those mountain folks are vengeful. Do you think he has not guessed that you have a hand in helping Azamat? Moreover, I'll bet you anything that he recognized Bella today. I know that. A year ago, he was mightily attracted to her. He told me so himself. And if he could have hoped to get together a decent amount of bright money, he would certainly have asked her in marriage. The cutting looked thoughtful. Yes, he answered. We have to be more careful. Bella, from now on you must not go walking on the rampart anymore. That evening I had a long talk with him. I was vexed that he had changed toward that poor little girl. Besides spending half the day hunting, his treatment of her had become cold. He would seldom caress her, and she began to wilt noticeably. Her little face became thinner. Her big eyes lost their luster. You would ask her, What are you sighing about, Bella? Are you sad? No. Is there anything you like? No. Did you miss your family? I have no family. Sometimes, for days on end, you could not get anything but yes or no out of her. Well, this was what I started talking to him about. Now look here, Mas Maxim Maximich, Maxim Maximik, Maxim Maximich. He answered, I have an unfortunate disposition. Whether it is a whether it is my upbringing that made me thus, or whether God created me so, I don't know. I only know that, I, that if I am a cause of unhappiness for others, I am no less unhappy myself. Naturally, there is poor comfort for them. Nevertheless, this is a fact. In my early youth, from the minute I emerged from under my family's supervision, I began madly to enjoy every pleasure that money could buy. And naturally, those pressures became repulsive to me. Then I ventured out into the Grand Monde, 
and soon I became likewise fed up with society. I have been in love with fashionable belles and have been loved, but their love only irritated, irritated my imagination and vanity. While my heart remained empty, I began to read, to study. I got just as sick of studies. I got just as sick of studies. I saw that neither fame nor happiness depended on them in the least, since the happiest people are dunces, while fame is a question of luck, and in order to obtain it, you, you only have to be nimble. Then I began to be bold. Soon after, I was transferred to the Caucasus. This was the happiest time of my life. I hope that boredom did not exist amid Chechen bullets. This is ahead of our time.